effectively is something more like 34 million. So right off the bat, these numbers are always inflated. Well, I think. You know, not necessarily always, but there's a chance that they are, and and we can't necessarily go with a revenue projection that's, you know, that we're going to get seven mm -hmm. plus million and. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of 10 years, we find out it was far less. And, of course, we still got the upkeep on Waverly Road. And I'll be honest, I still have a question about whether or not that 30 acres on the northeast side of 191st and Waverly has now precluded us from having maintenance, you know, responsibilities for the south end of Waverly Road. I mean, we can take Waverly right. down to that portion, and then what happens? Edgerton's completely responsible for that mm -hmm. to me. And so what happens there? I mean, we could take heavy haul all the way down there, and then they're on the gravel to 191st Street. That's not going to help big industrial lane. Mm -hmm. So obviously, we're, uh, Edgerton's going to have to be involved in these discussions. It's not just mm -hmm. a cut and dried scenario here. Well, um, I'm sitting here looking at this yellow line that represents the western boundary of, of Gardner. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you know, if, if if we've got Edgerton and they're they have the capability to put heavy haul here, and say they decide they want to help the, the people with big industrial and Zimmer put heavy haul on the 80 acres there, then uh, we've got a you know what's what's going to end up being to the east of these parcels, mm -hmm. uh, and and what is that going to mean to the homeowners? Uh, that are in uh, some of these new subdivisions, Genesis uh, Farms. Farms and uh, Fairfield, Fairfield, yeah. mm -hmm. where Cheryl lives, uh, as well as uh, uh, we were at a Johnson, Southwest Johnson County uh, planning meeting last week. You know, there's uh, the uh, people with the state and the county and, and uh, other jurisdictions are, are are saying that we're probably going to uh, uh, need to look at uh, extending 188th Street, probably over to Waverly, uh, and you know now, I mean, if we lose control of everything that's that's west of that yellow line, what is that going to do for the quality of life for the residents in those subdivisions in those apartments? Uh, What's it going to mean if uh, if we don't have any, and, and we have a design standard, a reasonably comprehensive one, whereas our, our friends to the west, I don't <coughs> have one that is quite so comprehensive. Uh, you know, we've got developable property that's right off of Gardner Road, but how many of them are going to want to bring in a, a different shopping or, or commercial uh, entities into an area that backs directly up to a, a poorly designed uh, warehouse. Uh, and, and I guess, I mean, I guess that's a, a very valid point, but the, the question that I have is at what cost? I mean, at what cost do you have to, that, I mean, and that's really what we have to decide. Yeah. You know, it, what is the, the at what, what are the costs that we are willing to incur to have control over what that looks like? Well, I think there's, I think there's a couple of things. I mean, it, it seems like the, the consensus is, is that at the cost of having to bring, a hundred, bring Cherokee up to standard and, and, and bring it over and then maintain it and then probably have to repair it, uh, and run it right by our, our residential neighborhoods, I don't think there's an appetite for that. Uh, now, the, the next thing is, I mean, is there an appetite for doing paving Waverly Heavy Hall? And then there's the, the matter of, are we splitting Waverly Road with Edgerton 50-50, or are we splitting it with them 40-60, or, you know, depending on, on how much property we each have on each side of it. Here, here's another point to remember, and this was made at the Johnson County Planning meeting. I specifically asked because they mentioned that oftentimes office parks buffer these uh, these areas, and I and I specifically asked, and you know, Steve, you heard it, Chris, you heard it, Mike, you heard it. Where would those office parks be? And they said, without any prompting, to the east of Waverly Road. Now that's a perfect buffer, and that is something we can. Uh, at least put in our comp plan as a desired 
an outcome, is it not? Yeah. I mean, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying we can force that issue, but I'm saying right now it's 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 low density residential. It's rural residential, right? So if if you have it in the city, you can designate the land use and adopt that as part of your comp plan and it would be office unless this governing body decides they want to change it to something else. So you would be able to control office out there. But but we have to the but you need it. have to agree to annex it, right? Right. You need it in it, well that's that's fine, but that's that's how this whole process should be working is we should be out there with a bag full of abatements, if that's what the council wishes. I mean, I'm still probably going to vote against it. <laughs> but I would rather somebody go out there and say, I'll tell you what, we can talk about abatements and we can talk about all kinds of fun stuff if you bring us an office park, which is the right thing to do for the people that live to the east of, of that road. And that's how I see this. I mean, it all goes back to, you know, kind of what we are going to talk about with uh, Marvin's Tow Service. I mean, I'm glad that they withdrew because I was, I had one of my, my one of my issues on there was uh, exactly the reason they you know you cited as why, probably why they did and that was it didn't even meet the minimums, so I think we need to dispense with discussions about what yeah. ifs on things that people bring us who are already more than likely going to develop the property and and try to foster what we want there first by doing a comp plan and finishing it, and secondly by shopping for the kinds of developments we want. And, I mean, does, does that make sense? Or Well, um, I, I think abs I, I, in an ideal world, the comp plan first is the way to go. The urgency of this, I would say, kind of the survey analysis where we're looking at it, we kind of know what's going to be there, kind of the office component. I mean, it's only going to be one of two things. Um, the approach may be, and this is used by municipalities, all the time, when you want a particular thing, you provide the greater incentives for that use. Okay. So if, it, if office is kind of what you want, then office becomes your 65 or your mm -hmm. 60 or your 70. It becomes the, the magic number to go beyond your baseline is you're putting in what the city wants. So you're kind of driving the type of development you want. And that's probably a good larger discussion about annexation and what we really want to see there, what we really want to see in this area, and then staff would be in a good position to go meet with the property owners and say, here's what we're willing to offer for you to be annexed into the city. Is that, is that a, do you agree that that's, that's a good way to, not, not to, <laughs> I mean, I know, I'm just saying, do you, well, when we need is that, is that, is, it, is what we're all proposing here the way we should be doing it? Well, when you said, your bag of annexation tricks or whatever you said. Yeah. Um, I think you need to know what, staff needs to know what the council is kind of willing to do uh, in order to have those conversations. I think the first thing that's going to be on the mind of the property owner is what's my highest and best use? What am I going to make the most money on? Right. If somebody else is whispering in their ear something that's more intense that, that brings higher income, they're they're going to be they're going to gravitate toward that. Uh, we might have on a plan that it's office, but if if a broker is telling them that well I can we can do something that's and I don't even know what the income potential of office versus industrial is. It's in a good market. It's probably better, but it's got to be. But right? you know it all depends on a lot of factors. Location is one of them, and this is probably not you know the doesn't jump out at you as having the best access for a lot of uses. But um, but I think you're right in saying that we have to know where, we're, where we stand and be willing to, I, I hate to say this in a public meeting, but we have to be willing to uh, try a little harder to get what is more desirable for the city of Gardner. And uh, I think that absent those areas being in the city, you are at the mercy of whatever uh, someone delivers for Edgerton. I think it, it comes down to, you know, just the theological where direction is. Do we want to be a player in this part in, in this part of the land? Because you know, I've heard almost everyone say, "I'm scared to invest the money in the road." Well, if we're scared to invest the money in the road, any development that comes there is going to take a road investment. So if we don't want to pay money for roads, then maybe we just want to go ahead and say. Is that is that what 